Yo, hello, my name is Westbam and welcome to another V4 tutorial. In the previous lesson I introduced the two mapping nodes, the map value and the map range value. And now it's time to look at some examples. Well, of course the most used function is just mapping a value from one range to another. Like I have explained in the previous lesson. I have set up this little demo patch to remind you again what it's all about. We have a blue quad running from left to the right and a red one that does the same. The LFO is what makes it run and I have set it to a 4 second cycle. It is just connected to the translate x of the transforms. Now the red one goes through the map node and by default it doesn't appear to do much. So let's change that. So it goes from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. My renderer goes from minus 1 to plus 1, so I need to change the destination minimum to minus 1 and I can keep my destination maximum the same. And now you see the red quad is going from the left to the right, all in 4 seconds. Ok, let's change the source range a bit. It goes from a 0 to a half and let's see what happens. Well, now my red quad is still going from left to right, but it goes twice as fast as the blue quad and it actually shoots out my renderer. It goes from 0 to plus 3 and that's why you don't see it over here, because my renderer doesn't go to plus 3. So let's change the mapping mode to clamp. I right click here and I pick clamp. Now my red quad goes from left to right and stops at the end. It does this in half of the period, so in 2 seconds. So it goes from left to right in 2 seconds, then waits 2 seconds until the LFO cycles again and then it starts all over. And if I set the mapping mode to mirror, the red quad bounces back, left and right. So in a period of 4 seconds my red quad is going back and forth one time. And if I change the source maximum to 0.25, it goes back and forth two times in four seconds. And if I put my mapping mode to wrap, my quad will jump back from left to right four times in the same time it takes the blue quad to do one movement. And for example, if I make the source maximum higher than one, let's say two, the red quad will never reach the edge of my renderer, it will stop halfway, and that is because my Input for my map node goes from 0 to 1 and not from 0 to 2. Ok, this was a quick recap on what the map nodes do. And this works perfect if you know the source minimum and source maximum. And I only know that because I know we got an LFO connected to it. But let's pretend we don't know the source minimum and source maximum. I'm going to make a random spread with insane values. And I want to use these values as coordinates so I can see them in my renderer. So let's delete some stuff we don't need and uh, start over. So I'm gonna draw a square around this and then I hit the delete key. I only need one quad for this example, so I'm going to delete the other quad. Okay, let's make a random spread and set the width to something very high. So I right click and I type in a very high number, something like 10,000. And I'm gonna put the spread count to 10 so I just right click and drag up. If I was to connect this random spread directly to the transform that goes to the renderer, there is a big chance we don't see anything. And indeed we don't see any quads at all. Well that is because we only can see values that are between minus 1 and plus 1. And uh, if you look at the output of the random spread, you can see we don't got any values that are between minus 1 and plus 1. So we're gonna make a map value node map value and we are going to map our random spread. Well I know my destination minimum and maximum, it's going to be minus 1 and plus 1, but I don't know the source minimum and source maximum. When I talked about the spectral nodes, I showed you about the bounce node, that is the bounce spectral. And this is a great node to help us with the mapping. Because if I connect my random spread to it, I now know the minimum and maximum value, or the highest value and the lowest value. So we can use this as our source minimum and our source maximum. And now you can see we got 10 quads inside our renderer. Uh, some are overlapping and that's why it looks weird. 
I used a random spread and I didn't know the values, but yet it is all mapped correctly now. And this is the real power of the mapping node. Okay, let's finish this off. I'm going to copy this, this random spread. So select all the nodes, hit Ctrl D to duplicate. And this one is for the X axis and this one is going to be for the Y axis or the translate I pin. So I'm going to connect my map to the translate I of the transform and I can delete this node. And now you got 10 nodes and they're all diagonally in a line now. Well, the reason that they are all lined up like this is because I use the same random seed for both random spreads. So if I change the random seed by right clicking and dragging, I got a different random spread and my quads are placed at a different location inside the renderer. So here you got a very good example of a very large unknown spread that is mapped correctly back to our renderer. If you have picked up anything in this lesson, I hope it is that the bounce node and the mapping node are two very good friends. And we have two more cool nodes to help us with mapping. And these are the apply transform, apply transform transform and the map value interval. And I will show you how to use these two nodes in our next tutorial. But for now, that's it for me. My name is Wes Bam, and thank you all for watching.